This is actually called a laundry tray pump. It's going to mount underneath a bar sink or a utility sink right here. And below it, it has a pump and a motor, a little float switch right here. And when water comes down into this chamber, the float switch brings on the pump and it pushes water out here. It can push it up as high as 14 feet and it can connect back into the drainage system. So this is a new basket strainer, the part you see in any kitchen sink. Uh, here's the stopper right here. Now underneath, it has a couple of nuts. This one connects the pipe to the bottom of the basket strainer and this lock nut would connect the basket strainer to the bottom of the sink to, to compress it. But we're not going to use either one of these. What we are going to do is to use this upper portion. I'm going to put some putty right here, put this down into the sink. And I just want to put a little bit of Teflon tape on these threads right here. Okay, now there's a gasket here. And now there's a series of gaskets, a fiber gasket and then an O-ring. Fiber gasket first and then the O-ring. All right, Ken, pass me that pump, would you? So this is a threaded adapter that goes right onto the pump. A little bit of Teflon tape. Try not to cross the threads. So now I've adapted this threaded adapter onto the pump and now these PVC pieces will get me through into the next room. To be sure I glue it together correctly, I'm just going to install a few witness marks that I'll line up when I'm gluing it together. Good. I use a, a cleaner and a glue. Hold it for a five count, that should do it. Lucky for us, a lot of our work can be done right in here in this laundry room in the wall right behind that bar sink. You can see the hot and the cold supply piping for water to the sink. Here's our drain that's coming from that new pump. But now we need to connect this pump into the existing drainage system for the house. Okay. Just give me that bucket. And this piece. And I'm going to go inside the fitting. Okay, good. So now you can see the beauty of this no hub coupling because I can just slide that coupling right down over that splice and then tighten it up. Okay, so we've got all of this piping dry fitted, meaning not glued. Mm -hmm. But you can see now the water is going to leave that pump. It's going to come up this way and go up into the drain line right here. But not all the water will get out of this pipe before the pump shuts off. So we don't want that water falling back down, making the pump come back on again. So one device that's installed right here is designed to protect that pump and it's called a check valve. Let me show you how it works. So now, you look inside here, there's a little flapper that lets the water go in this direction and this direction only. It can go this way, it can't go this way. Mm -hmm. So that goes right here. Now the other issue we have is that this pump is strong. It can put up more than 20 gallons a minute. Now the faucet can only give you, what, three to five gallons a minute to the sink. Okay. So what you're saying is that the pump is actually discharging more water than the sink can supply. That's right. So if we don't do something about it, you turn that faucet on, and it's running, all of a sudden the pump is on and off, on and off, on and off, and that'll shorten the life of the pump. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this ball valve on the discharge. So what we're actually going to do is actually close down the size of the discharge so the pump will be able to pump less. And we're going to try to match the discharge rate to the rate of the faucets, and that'll make the pump stay on longer and last longer. Oh, great. All right, we are ready to glue this all together and plug it in. And then we just add water. Ah, so you can hear it coming on and off. See how fast it's pumping so fast it's leaving that float switch. All right, just go in and close down that ball valve for me, will you? Turn it until the pump stays on longer. I think you got it. You officially have a full wet bar. Mm -hmm.